is the old Big East back, Tate, or is it dead? Because on the one yeah. hand, uh, <laughs> Dan Hurley gets Can tossed. Can it be both? That's the question. Yeah, Dan Hurley gets tossed on some BS that, uh, frankly, in the old Big East would never have, uh, you know, never would have even registered as anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Gets two texts, tries to pump up the UConn crowd, gets tossed. So that tells me the old. Slaps the table. Yeah, that tells me old crowd. Big East not back. But yeah. then the UConn Huskies. Come back from down. What were they down? Like four in the 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 they they were down four in the final minute. Yeah, it looked like it was over. Sixty nine, sixty five. Yeah, come back and beat Villanova. UConn beating Villanova, Tate feels like an old Big East thing because yeah. Villanova represents the new Big East. UConn represents the old Big East. The old Big East may in fact be back because UConn, who ran the old Big East, is now back. Yes, but then they're not at the top of the Big East standing. It's very confusing. We're going to try to. This is off. the first win for UConn over Villanova since the 2014 NCAA tournament. Wow. What? Wait, wow. what? That's where we are. Yeah, so uh, the old Big East might be dead, but it might be back. We don't really yeah. know. Uh, what I know for sure is dead is the Michigan State Spartan State. They uh, got obliterated by Iowa tonight. Um, they, they, they have zero Once identity. the number 11 team in the country. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people is. chirping at us. Why aren't you promoting this team? Why aren't you shooting this team to the moon? Yes, here is why. Here's why. Watch, watch what happened yeah. tonight against Iowa. Um, we also got to talk about uh, a story that we have not touched on on this show because it happened over the weekend. Yes, which is um, you were at Daytona. Yeah, <laughs> I was at the Genesis Open. We we had other things going on, but we have to talk about. This. <laughs> we have to talk about Jawan Howard. In Michigan, uh, what what are we called it, Jim? The the melee, the melee this is in, Jim in Madison, the Madison melee, <laughs> no, melee he, in Madison, melee in Madison. Jim Jim's getting really excited with the opportunity to brand something. Yes, uh, you know, like this Palace is Jim. The Palace. What is it? This is the. How do you spell melee? melee? Does anyone know? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about Jawan. I know everybody is just like dying to hear our thoughts. Feels like it's already yeah. resolved at this <laughs> yeah. point, which is really good for us. You know what I mean? We. We didn't want to be the first ones to come in and say this is what should happen. Then something drastically different happens. We look dumb. We wait till the final result. Then we chime in. Yeah, and then we chime sure. in and tell you where everybody, where you, you got, got it, wrong. it wrong. Yeah, you yeah. got it wrong. That's, that's classic. <laughs> no, we'll 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 talk about Jawan and 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 the uh, the fallout and all that. I'm the sure melee we'll at the end. But uh, we're gonna mostly talk about maybe UConn. Uh, yeah, the big win. Uh, all that coming up. But first, what do you All right, Tate. UConn seventy-one, Villanova sixty-nine. Uh, this coming on a day where we 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 were on the internet and uh, Evan me me. How do you say his name? Evan Mikawa. Miyakawa. Yes. My apologies to Evan. Uh, mm -hmm. Miyakawa. Yeah. He's a uh, he he popped up into our lives. He crunched uh, the numbers for us. Yeah. He crunched the numbers on the yeah. race to sixty-nine and told us that the race to sixty-nine. Because I I had put on the last show I put the race to sixty-nine at number one on the fraud power ring. Yes. Uh, and he chimed in and he was like, not so fast. 93.7% of the time Ooh. that the team that scores 69 first, uh, they, they are the team that is, in fact, victorious. Which, if you round up, is 100%. It is basically 100%. It is 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not basically. It is. If you get a 93 it, on a test, you fell like someone If someone tells you you have a 93% chance of something happening, you do hear 100, for sure. If you, it, 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 I, I hear a hundred. If you're like exactly, yeah, I'm like okay, then nothing can go wrong. And, and yeah. at the end of the day, when you get your report card, is it an A? Yes, these are these are both A's. This yeah. is an A. The race of sixty nine was well, great with an A. We we unfortunately for uh, Villanova fans, we saw the uh, six point yeah. three percent. This was an F. Yeah, uh, tonight as Villanova up by four in the final minute, choke it all away. Uh, how about this, Tate? R.J. Cole takes a charge. R.J. Mm. Cole wears number two, takes a charge. This is Tuesday. On Colin Gillespie, who wears number two. Mm. It is Tuesday, 2 22 Yeah, spelled T-W-O. Mind blown. Um, your thoughts on the final call? Let's start that. Well, honestly, RJ Cole, the shot that he made prior was, you know, the ball does not lie at the end of the day. There was like a seven-point swing with the technical and everything with Dan Hurley earlier in the game. And That's I felt point. like it all kind of cosmically came back at the end and the good fortune was on the side of UConn. I'm not saying that it was a charge though, because I don't think it was a charge, <laughs> it was a charge. but I also think that it's college basketball. We know how makeup calls work. And I think that at that point, the officials said to themselves, we look this around, was... we've helped Villanova quite a bit in this game. Again, seven point swing with the whole technical and all that stuff. The ghost of the ghost of Dan Hurley put his hands on this yes. game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The rev, a man the took a charge when 12 <laughs> yeah, as a coach. 
<laughs> so RJ Cole learned something. Great point. We we made this point. We were talking about uh, the Tennessee Arizona game uh, mm-hmm. a while back, and it felt like the Tennessee fans just swallowed those refs alive, and the refs yes. were terrible. And that is what Tennessee does. Yeah, yeah. I fear um, for any referee in Knoxville. And I made the point that the college basketball refs are the worst. They are by far the they worst. They are the worst of, people. Of, of, <laughs> of all the officials in sports, college basketball refs are the worst. But I understand how they why they're the worst. It's because they're put in like the most insane environments where. They're just like, honestly, I don't care that much, so I'm just going to make the call that gets me out of here alive. Yeah. And I think maybe that, you're right, maybe it helped. Maybe that, like, the, in that moment, the guys, the, the refs were like, you know what? We can still win this. We can still come out of here as the good guys. Yeah. Eh, we're going to go ahead and call that a charge. When it, like, my call, I don't think it was a block either. Per se. I, I think it just should have been a no call, and, and Villanova takes it out. And, That's what we said live. We're like, just, just, just 1. No 1. 1.1, 1. 1.3, whatever it would have been on yeah. the clock. Ball goes out of bounds. Give them one more shot. Yeah. Yeah. See what happens. Let the game decide. That, um, that's the problem with the officials across the board in college basketball. Let them play is what you're saying? No. It's very old Big East. Yeah. We need to change the blue blood, new blood to old Big East or new Big East. We, who's Race to six who's, who's, yeah. who's going to win? Who's winning? Maybe it doesn't factor into the Big East as much because of all the, you know, the old Big East vibe. Yeah. The, the juice that was in there. This, feel, this felt like, though, seriously, that UConn kind of got over a hurdle a little bit in the new Big East. Yeah. You know, we talk about the old Big East a lot, but in the new Big East, they had to kind of let it be known that, hey, we're number two here, and we, saying, we want to solidify. Are that. you saying UConn's back? I think they're, I think they're there. Yeah, I think they're on. You know what? Us. You know what? I am one hundred percent sure of with UConn is that those fans are there. Love Dan Hurley. Yes, they love like at a time where we're by at the end of the show when we were going to talk about Jawan Howard and coach behavior and like, is it good mm-hmm. to be fired up and is that leadership or is that, you know, is that what we want out of our coaches and do we demand more? And yeah. what about the kids and all that? I'll say this. We'll save that discussion for the end of the show, Tate, for right now talking about Dan Hurley. UConn fans love that. There, There's, I, yeah. I, I can't imagine there are too many UConn fans that are like, I wish our coach wasn't crazy because they, they get absolutely fired up. He he is he is uh I mean Nate Oates has got tossed uh uh what was that Thursday the last Thursday yeah. uh at the Alabama game and Bama fans were cheering. That's what you do when your coach gets tossed. You clap it up. You say good job, coach. It doesn't matter thank what you, he coach, does. Fighting the good yes, fight. Thank you for yeah. fighting the good fight. But the UConn fans tonight were on another level. Now part of it was because the alcohol. <laughs> part of it was <laughs> the circumstances in which he got tossed were bush league to say the least. Uh, bush light. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, I think it was indicative of like the relationship that these fans have with that man, which is like they, they where you and I might look at him as sort of a meme, sort of a, just a goofball at times, a caricature, a caricature yeah. whatever the people in that arena and the people on his bench, they believe they go nuts for him. Yes. Yeah. He has the people, he has the pulse of the UConn fan base. And let's be honest, UConn basketball fans are some of the most diehard fans you'll ever meet in your life. Mm-hmm. And they are college basketball and Dan Hurley at least takes that pride and that passion seriously, which is what they really wanted. You know, that yeah. was, I mean, we love Kevin Ollie, the player, but he was a more reserved type of guy. Hurley is more of the Bruce Pearl style where you really feel like he's in the I don't think he's Bru- Bru- Bruce. I, 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 okay. As far as the energy, yeah, yeah. Not, not the execution. Because Bruce Pearl is like, I'm fun. Yeah. And I bring the energy, and I'm the fun guy at the party. Yeah. Dan Hurley's like, I am absolutely not fun. I will bite your head. I will off. bite your head off. Yes. But we might win, and and, and anybody's not UConn like UConn needs that bite. Like but, they need someone to step out, put their yeah. neck out, and say we're UConn basketball. But I, I think the difference too is like he he's you know if 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 you're squinting and you're not actually like watching Dan Hurley at his behavior you might assume he's got like some bob knight in him you know because he's just a crazy guy on the sideline whatever the difference being that dan hurley does like love his players yeah he's love a his players coach. like he yeah. he he's crazy but then he channels it all and like both chest bump dudes as they're going to timeouts and slap guys on the ass and like you said rj yeah. cole took that charge yes. for dan hurley yes and, and as he got yes. tossed he huddles up the guys and he's like He's like, he gives him a pep talk, me, fight for me. And then he turns to the to the ref and says, You're an effing bomb on his way out. <laughs> I do love, I'll say this too. The the, uh, her, the way her the circumstances around his ejection were garbage. Like he he complained about a call that was a bad call, first of all, but like still, whatever. You get one T. The, the first technical was literally he turned it on the scores table and slammed slam, it. Yeah. But which it, which is nothing. That's nothing. But but I understand. That's not yeah, and it's not I, it, I see the demonstration, yeah. the ref's like, this is too much. That one's like, you know, we can maybe argue whatever. 
But then he basically like laughs, high fives one of his guys, he turns to the crowd and 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 raises the raises the crowd up, and then he, and that's how he gets tossed. Yeah, and in a vacuum, that's ridiculous, and it's like why under that, that's not a that's not a circumstance to toss a guy. But you and I both know that Dan Hurley is a hundred percent the guy that like you tell him where the line is. He walks up to the line. He leans over the line. The second yeah. you turn, his the second you turn his your head, you're behind the line. But his nose yeah. and his body are leaning over yes. the line. And then he's, he's in your space. And then he puts his hand over the line and doesn't touch the ground. But he puts it like a millimeter above the ground. He's like, I'm not touching it. Mm-hmm. I'm not touch. Mm-hmm. I'm not. And then the refs just pointing at him like, yeah, I swear to God, if don't you touch, touch it, it. Don't I swear to God, it. he's like, I'm not. T-. <laughs> and then the ref turns. It's, it's, it's the key and peel sketch of the, yeah. the humping. And then he touches it. <laughs> and he tees him up. He's like, What? <laughs> what did I do? Yeah. Um. So that part cracked me up. Because Which the crowd loves. The crowd loves it. Exactly. Because like the, the again, like in a vacuum, Dan Hurley's like, this is this is BS. How was I tossed? But it's like we all know how you're tossed. Like what what led to this point is years of behavior of like the refs, like yes. it whatever the benefit of the doubt is, he has the exact opposite. You, yes. You um, have no benefit. And then, you know, like it sure, is no doubt all he was what you were doing. All he was doing was turning and pumping up the crowd, but like also you know, the guy thought he was showing up. It was a bad call. Don't get me wrong. Jim it was, it's just a, funny that it's Dan Hurley. It's that's... funny because it's Dan. Jim asked us what he thought Dan Hurley was doing, you know, Great during question. the rest of the game. And he probably was losing his mind throwing yeah. things. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. That's, and, that, and that's I, why I would, we love the guy. I, I would think, do, J- Jim, you, you, you wondered, too, do you think he was texting assistant coaches and trying to coach from the... Yeah, is he allowed to do that? Bobby Valentine put I, on I, a mustache? I think technically no, but... No. Texting from a burner? It's the mustache of technology yeah or he could have done what james book did. what is it with uconn dude james book was at the xavier game he got he got tossed and he just went up to the student section <laughs> that's what he was that's saying amazing. jim was saying that tonight he's like i wish book could have coached for that'd be hilarious have come out of the student section <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, oh my god is that james yeah. book yeah. music yep <laughs> hilarious you you uh you cut to the cre- the student they win the game, and the UConn uh, students spill onto the court, and Dan Hurley's in that group, and just like running with them. going crazy. Are you, uh, there was other. I had a couple UConn fans uh, that we know reach out to me. They were upset about the court storming. They're oh, like, UConn. We don't I think I know who court. one of the UConn. Fans. <laughs> yeah, you, I think I know who one of those UConn. Fans. Very upset about about this, and and I. It is a good point. It's a fair point. No, uh, you know, like I, I I'm, I'm pro storming. Years. I'm pro storming yeah. under any circumstance. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I, if 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 Duke beats Mercer by thirty, and the Duke and the Cameron Crazies want to storm the court. Oh my God! I mean, I'd make fun of them, but like, old, like my honest opinion, I don't care. It's like, d- do whatever you want. I'm working but on a, I'm working on a feature report right now, sidebar about a uh, Duke pumping in crowd noise for the crazies. Oh really? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get you that for the fraud powering. You know what? I've been seeing a lot of speaking of the crazies. This is this is classic us, by the way, that mm-hmm. we're talking about. <laughs> Great moment in UConn basketball history. <laughs> Quick aside. All roads lead back to Duke. Uh, I I've I've been seeing a uh, uh, a swell of uh an mm. idea that the crazies aren't as crazy as they used to be and like that's facts the, <laughs> and i'm coming i would love that i would come with the data i look like that that is that is like the saturday night live of uh college basketball is like the back in my day it was you know it, was it, it sucks what happened to saturday night live because like in two like when when i was coming of age it yeah. was the best oh such i feel a great like cast. that's what everybody thinks about yeah everyone the likes crazy. the crazies when they're in high school yeah yeah when you're in high school and <laughs> you're looking for a college show, yeah they were crazier, man. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, they were just the best. Uh, what were we talking about? UConn. UConn. Um, the, oh, oh, storming the court. Yeah. Is that is that a uh? So I I I'm pro court storm under any circumstances. I don't care. Um, I would say if if you are someone that takes this seriously and you're of UConn's ilk, and you know if you're like a UConn fan that like makes fun of everyone else when they storm the court, yeah. I would be a little upset about this one too. I think UConn, but I don't care. For me personally, do not care. Storm the court. Have fun. I think it's a, fun time. It's a divide between Calhoun Yukon fans. Because Calhoun yeah. fans, they would never storm the court. Old Big East. The new Big East. Yeah. New Big East Yukon storms the court. Mm-hmm. Old Big East Yukon, this would never. Which maybe this never happens again. But Cal- maybe if, the old if Calhoun was tossed from this game, if oh. and he's in Dan Hurley's shoes, they start storming the court. He's running out of the tunnel, throwing <laughs> he's to one hour to guys. <laughs> Trying like, to get off the rest. court. Get off the court. We don't do this here. <laughs> Coach K yelling, shut up at the kids. Uh, Sonoga was awesome tonight. Yeah, with 20 and 6. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's he's great. I like UConn. When I look at both these teams tonight, and at one point I thought Villanova was going to win this game, and my talking point to you was going to be 
Villanova wins, but I think UConn's a better tournament team. Yeah. And I and I leave this game feeling better about UConn in the tournament. Oh, you're drinking the Villanova uh, Kool-Aid that I'm trying, the anti-Villanova Kool-Aid. That yeah, I'm a little trying. bit. All right. I just think that UConn with Sonogo, if they play like they did tonight, they're a scrappy team. They're going to be a tough out. I feel like they could be a second weekend team. Yeah. So I f- the Big East, I still, you know, like I'm I'm not trying to rain on UConn's parade, but um, I don't. I, I, You're not in. I'm not in on really any Big East team in terms of yeah. like a Final Four national title threat. But second weekend. But I am. In, there, there's a lot of second weekend Big East teams. Yeah. Like they're going to have six teams in the Sweet 16, and they're going to really. talk themselves. But like they have it. five or you know, yeah, a, a lot of Sweet 16 teams, and they're like, we're the best conference, and this is proof. Mm-hmm. And then they have zero in the Final Four. That's what it feels like the Big East is this year, which is okay. Great win for UConn. I like you know, it was, you know it was a great win for it's Providence. This helps. This helps Providence big time. is the new. What is where? Where's the Big East standings now? What is the? They have to be up, right? Two games. No, they, one and a half games. They, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to do the, uh, the math. <laughs> it's tw- Providence is twelve and two, and Villanova's fourteen and four. So Providence. Oh my is- god. <laughs> what, played what four more games than Providence? This is the problem in college basketball. There's yeah. too much math. Is Providence going to get a 2021 Michigan Big Ten title? And like, I, yeah. I'm I'm rooting for Providence to win the Big East, but if they win it in a manner that Michigan won the, like it if, if really Villanova, because they still have to go to Villanova. Villanova already won in the dunk, as we know, in a top ten tilt. Top ten tilt. And if the, the second top ten tilt is. <laughs> In Philly, and Villanova beats the brakes off of them. But Providence still wins the Big East. And then Villanova, the Villanova has more wins. Yeah, and beats the hell out of Providence twice. But Providence won the Big East. But Providence wins the Big East. I'm That's, fine with that. That puts me in a tough position though. No, Ed I, Cooley, Big East Coach of the Year. That puts me in a tough position because I was very anti that for Michigan mm-hmm. last year. But I want to be pro Providence winning the Big East. They have to beat Villanova, but they're not going to. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Maybe they do. Maybe they shock us. Maybe yes. they earn that Big East title, and we yeah. all say Ed Cooley, maybe National Coach of the Year, or at least in the conversation. Yeah. That's, least, I, that, that's what you do now. Put them in the conversation. Put them in the conversation. Uh, yeah, Providence, though. Providence has their, their final three games are Xavier at home. Win, hopefully. Okay. I don't know. Xavier or Scrappy, so not, not a guarantee. They won by three the first time they played Xavier. Yeah. Uh, in, in Cincinnati, obviously. Creighton at home. Creighton's tough. Great Creighton's. I don't know, dude. This is this is this like Providence. This, this, this is Providence's East. mo. Their last three games: Butler overtime. They, I didn't really watch that, but I was following along on Twitter <laughs> that like Providence w- w- was dead in the water in Indy uh, in Hinkle Fieldhouse, and then beat Butler in overtime. Uh, the game before that was a Villanova game that they let slip through their fingers. The game before that was at the DePaul game where they were talented at home and they they had to claw back to force overtime and then yeah won that. The game, the game before that was Georgetown. So anyway, their last three, they, they, it's this has been the Providence story the whole time. So if you're looking ahead to the Providence schedule and you're saying win, win, win or loss or what, you're, I don't know, you haven't been paying attention. To yeah, you're not paying attention. Yes, who the hell knows what's gonna happen with this team? Uh, but they might win the biggest. But the luck, the luck plays a factor. Yeah, we believe in the luck or the magic or whatever the Friars are up to. We like that. Uh, yeah, so you 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 believe in you kind of if you're picking a Big East team, a single Big East team to to put all your chips on as a final. I, if I tell you I'm from the future and there was one Big East team that made the Final Four, UConn. You like it as you like UConn. Are we are we sure we're not just doing the thing we did last year with UConn? Which uh, just like I think last year was more of a fluke than this year because I think they have what you need, which is a post presence. Yeah, I like the I like Sonogo. I think he can take them to. Sweet 16, and if they have the right, you know. R.J. Cole be that guy. I think maybe. Tonight was a big sign for me. I think he can play winning basketball. Yeah. He gets it. He's been there so long at this point. He knows what the right play is. Not to say he's going to make the right play, because that's a different conversation. But he at least knows (laughs) what the right play is. When he makes the wrong play, he'll tap his chest. And say, I know I I, I know that I I screwed that up. He'll just be like, I got it. And Dan Hurley's like, (laughs) come on, R.J. You know, that whole moment. All right. That's Which why, makes that's why believe you believe in, in you. Can... Yeah, that's why I believe in. Them. My God, uh, I think that brings me full circle to where I'm at with the Big East and why. Weekend two. I uh, uh, if if we were off air, I would say my answer is Villanova. If like yeah. if I actually had to put money on it, I would still. Say I mean, that, Villanova, I think that but... is the right answer, probably. But I'm I'm I've... trying to spice it up. I'll spice it up and say Providence because I'll just buy into... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just buy into the luck, dude. I'll say this: if Ed Cooley does go on a run with this, say they go to the Elite Eight or whatever. 
Ed Cooley is going to be a name that Louisville, right, will yeah. probably talk to, or Maryland, Maryland will probably talk to. And if or Michigan George, again, what if Georgetown? <laughs> yeah, what if Georgetown makes a change? Yep, that could be interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, Ed so, Cooley stays Ed in Cooley, the East, but he goes. To, he can't go to Georgetown. What if he did though? Yeah, that'd be fun. I, I'm just saying, Ed Cooley, you, hot name, hot, hot name, name, Ed Cooley. Hot name. <laughs> uh, Providence. I I I see their path to the final. They they're the Houston. They're yes. Houston last year. Like we can't believe this. Yeah, but it did work. Yeah. It, it just fell in their favor. Yeah, that's uh. So I'll, I'll pick Providence, but okay. the answer is still really no. Hey there! Thanks for watching Titus and Tate for the full friend of the program experience. Subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball. The action is heating up. Come join Titus and Tate.